with Adam McAvoy, uh, manager of the Seven Oaks uh, Power Chair Football Club. First of all, tell us about Seven Oaks Power Chair. Uh, well, Seven Oaks Power Chair is the Power Chair team for Seven Oaks, and it's our version of football for uh, people with uh, physical disability. And we use uh, an electric powered wheelchair to be able to uh, move the ball around the pitch, um, to be able to defend, attack, pass the ball, score goals. And you do it very successfully, I gather. Uh, yes, um, last season was a fantastic year for us. Um, we were in uh, the Championship Division nationally. Uh, we finished third, uh, which meant we were in um, a playoff uh, against a team called Northern Thunder Blues from Newcastle um, in the division above. Uh, we won that game 2 1, and we were promoted to uh, the Premiership for the first time in our history. And you brought uh, some of the uh, boys here uh, to watch the game against uh, Crowborough. Uh, who have you got here today? Who was is, who is with you today? Uh, give us a few names. Uh, we've got a mixture of players today, both from our, our national squad and also from our uh, development team as well. So we've got um, Captain Dan, who lives locally uh, in Riverhead. Um, we've got other players as well, including Miles uh, and Kyle, who's our uh, England hopeful for the future, um, and our development players, uh, Josh and Harry. And is the game developing you know, as, as from season to season? It's a relatively new thing, though, isn't it? Uh, as a game itself, um, it's been um, around officially for the last 10 years um, and uh, in England. And in England now, we've got about, I think it's 52 clubs, around 1,000 players uh, taking part on a regular basis, um, two national divisions and um, six regional leagues. So in England, it's growing. It's played in 24, 25 countries across the world. Um, and next year uh, is a special year because it's the uh, third edition of the Powerchair World Cup. And do I gather that one of your boys has been selected for the England squad? Yes, Kyle is uh, attending the next uh, England camp uh, in February up in Lishaw, which is a fantastic achievement. So That's Kyle, what's his surname? Kyle Alexander. Uh, fantastic achievement, seems as he's only 15 years old. Mm. Um, and the rest of his uh, squad mates are 19, 20 and above. So there's a big age gap. But the fact that he's been called up um, is a tremendous achievement for him. Uh, and it shows that uh, he's doing the right things and developing in a positive way. Um, we hope that uh, he makes the squad um, for Florida. And looking at the, the squad you've got yourself it, uh, and the rules of the game, um, is it based on, on, the, on the rules of association football? Yes, it's based on the rules of association football um, with a couple of um, slight variations. So it's a four-side version of the game uh, played indoors on a basketball court um, with a goalkeeper and three outfield players um, up to a, a squad of eight. Um, there's no offside rule with it being a small-sided game. Um, the only difference or the main difference is a, a rule which is a, a proximity-based rule. Uh, it's called two-on-one. So um, tackling uh, is one versus one and the second player has to be uh, three metres away from the ball. So that um, basically enables the game to flow, uh, the ball to be moved, and it stops um, it becoming um, a bit of a, a scrummage and a block. Um, so it enables uh, the game to flow. And what about the duration of the games? Uh, two 20-minute halves. So it's, it's you know quite a long affair, really. Yes. Um, usually uh, we normally play a minimum two games a day, um, and teams all travel to, to venues to play. Um, so it's normally a good atmosphere amongst all the teams and all the families and the players involved. Um, and it's as competitive as association football. And you're part of the Seven Oaks Town umbrella, which covers not only the, for the first team, the reserves, the veterans, the under-21s, and all the junior teams that uh, play you know, for the club on a Sunday. You, you are very much part of that. Yeah, very much so. Uh, and it's uh, fantastic to be involved in such a wonderful community club with a real sort of family feeling and um, wanting to bring everyone together um, and the relationship that we have as a power chair team um, with the club um, over the last four or five years has been fantastic and has, has strengthened year on year um, and we consider ourselves uh, very lucky to have the support. And how did the connection materialise? Um, it initially started through um, a connection, power chair football began at Valence School in Westrum um, and then some of the players that were leaving school wanted to play football. Uh, wanted to continue but the problem was it was only a school based team so we had to take the decision to set up a community based team um, to enable them to continue and then to bring in um, other players um, to then make the club ensure that the club could uh, be sustainable and grow uh, and obviously previously Seven Oaks had done some uh, fantastic work um, in blind football with Dalton House and they were very interested um, in working together with us 
and in 2012, Seven Oaks Powertrain Football Club was born. And are you based locally? Yes, we train over in Coombank, uh, uh, Radnor House over in um, Sundridge, so we are very local, um, and we've got players that are based in Seven Oaks and Tunbridge. Um, one player even comes, travels through the, through the tunnel from Southend to take part, such as uh, the popularity and the development of the club. And are you in a season at the moment as we speak? Are you playing competitively? Yes, we're um, midway through the National League season. Um, it's been uh, a tough season so far um, with our, our promotion. The standard in the Premiership is uh, far higher than we had previously uh, played in the Championship, but it's been a learning curve for our players um, when the main core of our squad are, are three boys of 15, um, supported by a couple of lads in their early 20s, uh, playing against players that are um, been playing for uh, a number of years and um, are very tactically astute. Um, it's been a learning curve, but it's something that the boys are um, thriving under and they're improving with every game. Um, we've now got a, a mid-season break through to March uh, and we're optimistic that when we go back in March um, we can hit the ground running and uh, our aim is to stay within the division. And talking about you personally, you're the manager of the team. Um, what's your background and, and how did you get involved? Uh, I previously worked in, in mainstream football from under sixes and under sevens through to um, elite level women. Um, Any particular club? Uh, Aston Villa Ladies. I uh, was based in the Midlands. Um, and I'd done some previous disability work, um, some blind football, some wheelchair basketball, some cerebral palsy football. Um, and an opportunity came to uh, move to Kent uh, to work at Valence School. And as part of that role was to take on the power chair team. Fell in love with it, um, wanted to um, develop it further and expand and grow and offer as, uh, as much opportunity as I could to as many people, um, which obviously led to the club development. and my passion for football coupled with the support of the players and the, and the parents has meant that we've developed and improved the season on season um, to where we are now and it's been um, a fantastic journey so far. And how are you funded? Do you have to raise your own funding? I, I know Carl is trying to raise money for a new chair uh, to uh, allow him to play for England or yeah, when he goes with the England squad. He's trying to raise money for a new chair um, to enable him to um, have the best equipment possible. Uh, and as a club ourselves, we are self-funded, so through any local funding applications, obviously the, the work and the generosity of, of the, the football club here, um, and anything we can do in terms of um, sponsorship, we, we run just as any other grassroots football club do. Uh, we're no different, and sustainability is, is a, a hot topic that we're always um, discussing to make sure that we can manage season in, season out. And the one final question is, uh, it just shows you that there is uh, no holding back, even if you are in a wheelchair. You know, you, you can still play football at a very high level and, uh, above all, enjoy it. Absolutely. Opportunities for everybody, um, regardless of disability. Um, there are opportunities there. It's just a case of, of finding out and then having a go, coming along, trying it and see if you like it. Um, and as well as the uh, competitive football element, there's a fantastic social element as well, which brings everyone together because football is, is a wonderful tool, mm. as, as sport is, to be able to unite people. Um, and Powerchair Football has been no different in bringing these families together, these people together that um, have many shared experiences um, that can come together and socialise on a regular basis through football um, and enjoy themselves along the way. And the winning is the extra bonus as well. And finally, the boys were here this afternoon with you. Did they enjoy themselves? Uh, because it, I think it's the first time they've been here to see a match live. Yes, the first time, well, for the majority, it's the first time um, that they've been here. Uh, our captain, Dan, who lives locally, um, regularly is here on a, on a Saturday, um, making use of this wonderful stand that we've got here. Um, and yeah, it was clear from the way that they were giving the goalkeeper a little bit of stick now and again that... Um, they uh, enjoyed themselves greatly and it was great that the team could come back to get a, a, a well-earned point. Anyway, great to talk to you. Uh, fantastic story. Brilliant uh, part of Seven Oaks Town Football Club and all the best for 2017. Thank you very much and just like to say thank you for the support from everyone that they've given here um, in the past and today and for the future as well. Adam, good to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Cheers.